The Weightlifting House News Show is back. In this episode, we're going to cover Carlos Nassar's return to Bulgaria, why Akbar Jiraev really could have actually beaten Liu Hanhua, two block cleans that are together 17 kilos over the world record, and a look through the stats of the strongest weightlifter of all time, Lasha Talakadze. But first, who do you think had the 10th best performance on the men's side and on the women's side throughout the entire Olympic qualifying period? This is something I want to do over the next few episodes, count down the best performances by Sinclair. So Sinclair is just a way of trying to distinguish between athletes of different weight categories who is actually the best. It's a way that we can compare Lasher to Rizki, a person who weighs 180 versus a person that weighs 73 kilos. So number 10 on the women's side, the 10th best Sinclair throughout the entire qualifying period, Song Kuk Hyang from North Korea. The North Koreans just came in and started demolishing this. 329.9 Sinclair. She did that at the Grand Prix 2023 in Qatar, which I was at. She's a 71 kilo weightlifter. She snatched 120. She clean jerked 149 there for a 269 kilo total. Had she made her attempts at the clean and jerk world record of 154, which she later made, I think, at the Asian Championships, she'd have had five more kilos on her total. She might have been up in the top five. Right now, she sits at number 10. And then on the men's side, the 10th best Sinclair of the entire Olympic qualifying period, it's Ri Won Ju from North Korea. Also, the 67 kilo weightlifter. So he snatched 144, which is a, it's a great snatch, but it's, you know, it's nine kilos less than we've even seen Chen Li Jun do this quad. But he hit 189 in the clean and jerk, a clean and jerk world record, which, I mean, it's huge, 189. He did that at the World Cup in Thailand. If you compare that to what some of the top 73s are hitting or the top 61s, you know, they're scraping into the 170s and the, the top 73s, you know, just creeping into 200. So yeah, 189 massive, 333 total. Both Ri Wong Zhu and Song Kuk Kiang are number 10 in the world. Next week, we'll do number nine. So to the news, after arriving back from the Olympic Games, Carlos Nassar from Bulgaria, who of course took the gold medal and actually was the number one ranked weightlifter in the world by Sinclair at that competition, despite not even taking a third attempt in his clean and jerk, he was absolutely mobbed by the new fandom that he's managed to garner since winning the Olympic Games. I mean, there are not many Olympic champions from Bulgaria, so for him to come back with one was amazing. So two weeks after winning, he had hundreds of people queued up in the mall just waiting to see him get a photo signature and I thought this was pretty cool something worth mentioning for sure because you just don't get a lot of this in weightlifting that kind of stardom that we're seeing here with Carlos next up let's move to the 102 kilo category a few athletes here the first though Akbar Jiraev the Uzbek Olympic champion from 2021 so obviously he took the silver medal at the Olympic Games I don't think we're doing any spoilers here I assume you all know what happened at the Olympic Games and he was really disappointed and you could tell that he was almost surprised shocked that he hadn't beaten Liu Hanhua who himself didn't have the best day in in Huan Hua's aka Giga Chad's defense but I was kind of surprised why is Akbar so disappointed then he posted some training lift a 195 snatch now the most we've seen from almost anyone in this category I think is 187. 195 snatch, a 225 clean plus front squat plus jerk. And then a 235 kilo clean and jerk. Two kilos over the world record. He didn't post the jerk, but he showed the clean and he said he did it for a clean and jerk. Now, of course, the only thing we don't know is how much did he weigh when he did this? Because he used to be a 109 and he was cutting down. And even in Thailand at the World Cup, he was basically, I think he was 108.3, something like that. So even in April, four months out from this Olympics, he still had a good seven kilos of body weight to cut. So I don't know how much he weighed when he did these. But what's equal is that that total in training, 195, 235, that's equal to the total that he hit to win the Olympic Games at 109. He did 193, 237, which is 430. 430 to total that in training and then go in and barely get over 400 and it's not like he lifted his best you know he he had to take massive attempts on his third attempt to try and sort of bluff Lu Huan Hua into taking an even bigger one and they both just bid each other higher and higher up and, and eventually they both missed so sure they both could have lifted more on the day but you know competition's competition I think it's exciting though what's he going to do at the world championships in Bahrain that are coming up in December will he stay at 102 and try and get redemption or will he go up to 109 where I assume he's going to be going up against Ruslan Nuradinov, the other Uzbek Olympic champion and ex-world record holder, because he's training as well at the moment. Despite his age, despite the longevity of his career, he's getting back into it. I saw a 180 snatch the other day. He's pushing 220-ish in the clean, maybe jerk too. So we might see the two Uzbeks back at it at 109, which will be fun. 
Let's stick with the 102s because this is one of the craziest lifts that just snuck under the radar. It's Garrett Karapetian, one of our boys. We love Garrett at Weightlifting House. He, he's a bit of a legend. He took fourth at the Olympics. We see him at all of these competitions and he'll be you know, having breakfast and you've got a lot of athletes there. They've got their meat, they've got their eggs. They're eating pretty healthily. And then there's him, he'll have like five pancakes. He'll have an entire pot of Nutella that he's just spreading on, sprinkles sugar. I mean, this kid is just, he's out of control with his diet, <laughs> but he's a real snatch freak. 195 kilo hang snatch. I mean, I saw him do a 180 double, which, you know, as amazing as that is, I always have to remind myself that Oculov did 180 for a double back as an 85 and then 190 for a single. But those were different times, different athletes, different supplements. <laughs> Garrick now 195 is amazing. He hit the 186 in Paris, uh, lifted very well, but just not quite able to hit his his all-time best total, that 401 that he made in Thailand. Okay, over now to one of the two world records from blocks. Now, of course, you can't set a world record from blocks. All I'm doing here is taking a derivative of a competition lift and then comparing it to the actual world record in the lift that it's a derivative of. It's not very fair, but even so, I think it's exciting sometimes to see these. Sarah Samir from Egypt, she took the silver medal at the Olympic Games. She's a multiple time world champion, very good lifter, 76, sometimes 81. Now the world record at 81 is 161 kilos in the cleaner jerk. We saw Salford at the Olympics attempting the 162 on a final attempt, not realizing that she'd already won the Olympic Games. Sarah Samir in training, 162, block lean, and then it goes up to 167. So a six, six kilo world record and uh, smokes it. She's got incredibly strong legs. I think I've seen her squatting 220, 210 for a double before on her Instagram. So, you know, certain athletes are gonna be much better off blocks. Athletes who are built like her, certainly. You know, the shorter limbs don't lend themselves to pulling, but they lend themselves to exploding, getting under, standing up. So she she does very well off the blocks there. The second athlete who hit a world record off blocks, Kader Mavainia, another of the athletes who's just one of our absolute boys here at Weightlifting House. We love him. 235 as an 89. This isn't when he was a 96. This isn't 2021 era. This is recent. That's 11 kilos over the current world record that Carlos hit, 224. But this was done before. So this was probably when the world record was, I, I, I would say based on the fact that Kedemar's levels have gone down, he must have been in great shape. So we're probably looking at early 2023, world record would have been 221, 220, 221. So, I mean, this is like 13, 14, 15 kilos over the world record at the time. It's absolutely ridiculous. But with a front squat of 290, back squatting well over 300 kilos, it's kind of no surprise that Kedemar can do that. It's worth mentioning as well, just because Kedemar is one of the athletes who was working with us on the house twos, we do still have some stock. The shorts sold out very quickly. We sold literally 300 units of the house twos in the first 10 minutes, which was amazing. So thank you to all of you who, who picked up a pair. Some of the leggings, mediums, larges, we've got a few left. So if you didn't get any when we dropped, we do, still do have some in stock, so you can check those out. Uh, but just amazing stuff there from Kedemar. I also received a video once, um, which I was not allowed to share, and I never will share. It's all, And I, I've showed Max, you all know Max, of course, my co-commentator, Max Ata. I've showed Max this video because he didn't believe me. It's a 280 kilo block clean from a super heavyweight. It's like a leaked video that's not supposed to go out there, but I'd be very interested to see if you guys can guess who it is. I'll just go through the comments and um, I'll try not to give it away if one of you gets it right. But I'd be interested to know who, who can who can work out who it was who blocked clean 280. I was somewhat surprised, so I'll, put it, I'll put it out there. At the time, that would have been 14 kilos over the all-time world record, so pretty big lift. Okay, a couple more athletes to go through. Tian Heart Attack Tao. Perhaps there's one more heart attack left in him because he's back. You know, we believed that he was basically done and retired, and I think he still is. He made some kind of mention after not making the Olympic selection that he was going to train for the Chinese games. I think that's what it's called. You've got Chinese nationals and you've got the games. I think it's the games. I think possibly it's even in his home province. So maybe that's why he's doing it or maybe he just wants to do it there because that's where great Chinese weightlifters tend to announce their retirement to have one final performance. But he is still training. He hit a 240 kilo front squat. Now, I don't know if this is him trolling. He wrote as his description, 80%. Now I'm no mathematician. Um, I don't claim to be, but I can work out <laughs> the 80%. If you're at 240, then that would make 100% 300 kilos. Is he saying that he has front squatted 300 before? Is he just trolling us? Does he look at his back squat and say this is a variation of the 
back squat and my one arm currently is 300 i don't know but i thought that was kind of kind of interesting make of that what you will he also then posted a 260 kilo back squat with a probably a good two second pause so tian tao's in shape i mean wouldn't it just be amazing if he didn't retire and he managed to get over these injuries you know i don't think there's a world in which he's going to win again realistically not a world championships no one's going to beat carlos now i mean carlos did the 404 at the olympic games you know 180 224 he had another attempt in him he could have definitely in that kind of shape done 228 maybe put on the 230 who knows carlos is pushing up close to close to 410 everyone else is tr is kind of mid 80s let's be honest Jason lopez can sneak into the 390s i assume that the chinese games is november-ish something like that the world championships starts december 6th in bahrain uh, and we're going to be covering it by the way at weightlifting house tv by the way junior worlds starts in a few weeks live at weightlifting house tv that's where you can watch it so if you want to watch junior worlds you want to see the new wave of young athletes who turn into the the big names over the next quad weightlifting house tv we've got some more documentaries coming uh, olivia reeves probably in a week the carlos nassar doc coming out after that and then it's worlds so stay tuned we've got a lot coming out there you kind of feel like tian could just he could do the chinese games and then maybe stay on do another world champs i don't know maybe it's wishful thinking the last person i want to talk about and i know that he's been spoken about a lot really is marin Rose. Robert, stanky leg robot from moldova look he's in a he's a brilliant weightlifter i started watching him i think the first time i saw him and took notice of him was in rome at the start of 2020 he was a 73 there since he's gone up to 81 and 89 his technique has always been interesting he's a great example of not letting something prevent you from becoming the best version of yourself just working around all of your immobilities and obstacles and everything obstructions and he's done that and he's getting better and better we all know what happened at the olympic games he made the 210 nino was it two 12 was it 212 i guess it wasn't a press out because a press out is only counts i mean that's the terminology for a lift that didn't count his elbows moved a lot and so you know robu didn't get the lift robu was obviously very upset about that quite understandably if you ask me the weeks following the olympics robu has been posting some of his favorite training lifts some of the be best lifts that he's done over the last few months 180 snatch he's made a couple of times you know that's massive you've got to wonder to some degree why he didn't take a third attempt in the snatch i mean i gave my reason why during the live commentary I, I figure that at this stage with his mobility levels the chance of making anything over 175 would have felt low and the risk to injury when your knees go this way instead of this way probably skyrocket so to have the energy to continue in the clean and check with the best in the best position um i imagine probably he felt like he needed to uh uh not not go up after that 175 they probably wanted to give him two shots at 175 and they figured look 175 210 385 that could be the bronze and we thought it would be that was actually the number that we wrote down as bronze medal um we didn't realize that nino was going to do you know some push presses and get given white light so robo also did the 210 clean and jerk and then i think the thing that impressed me the most was the 200 kilo clean plus power jerk plus jerk Incredible stuff there from from Robu. I won't go too much more into the Robu Nino. I mean, you, you guys all know my thoughts on the, the press out rule. It's a relic from a time where there had to be some level of ability to distinguish between the clean and jerk and the clean and press back in the 70s and earlier, obviously. And so they made a press out rule. Then you get rid of the clean and press and they maintain that press out rule, even though really there's no need to distinguish between the two lifts anymore. And the level of judging is so bad. You know, it it looks bad on TV, but it's worse when you're there in person. I'm not sure if it is worse in person, but, you know, I'm sat there watching it and commentating on it all the time, and it frustrates me to no end. You know, when you see how good Yeni Alvarez's lifts were, no lifted, Toma, flicker of the elbow, they've got to do something about it, I think. I mean, they don't have to do anything. They can do whatever they want, but I would suggest to them that they do something about that rule because it's annoying the fans tremendously and the number of people who are new to the sport who sit and watch it and celebrate a good lift, and then they have no idea why the lift was red-lighted. It's just, if you wanted to try and make the sport as unpalatable as possible to the general public, you would keep that rule in. Anyway, let's move on from that. So the last thing I wanted to do was actually run through some of these stats of Lash Talakadze, the strongest weightlifter of all time, because they are absolutely incredible. So I'll just pull these up again. Okay, so if you want to see these, you can head to, it's on the Weightlifting House Instagram. Um, if you're not subscribed there, go check them out. We put out these athlete cards with a bunch of stats. So Lash Talakadze, Georgia, obviously best lifts, 225, 267, 492, the all-time world records the heaviest lifts of all time crazy things here he is an eight-time continentals 
attendee, seven times champion. Worlds, he's been nine times, seven straight wins, which is just, you know, crazy. He hasn't missed a world championship since 2015 was the start of the streak, and he's just gone on and on and on. In Bahrain, which he should be competing at, he said, that's going to be eight, and I think at eight he joins maybe Alexiev as the only weightlifter to ever win eight uh, successive world championships which would be amazing that's just another thing to tick off that just gives him goat 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 the only thing he doesn't have at this point is Sinclair because he's behind Naeem and that may never happen unless he does 500 in which case it will happen Olympics now three times winner but really it's his consistency that blew me away he's taken 79 snatches in his entire career and he's made 72 of those 79 that's 91.1 percent make in the clean and jerk sorry 70 attempts and he's made 62 of them 88.6 percent 26 world records and i think the the thing that blew my mind most because he used to miss some snatches and clean jerks earlier on his, in his career which is why his numbers are i mean they're incredibly high 91 percent make in a snatch but they'd be even higher if we got rid of everything pre-2015 but at the at the european championships he has competed eight times which means he's taken 24 snatches and he has missed one snatch when I, that just blew me away. That was absolutely in incredible. We've got more of these athletes to go through, so head to the Weightlift House Instagram if you haven't already done so. Follow us there. I think we've actually got a bigger following on YouTube now, which is insane. We might be at 300k. If we're not at 300k, please subscribe because it would mean a lot. Although, give it a day or two and we should be at 300k at this rate. So subscribe anyway if you're not. Uh, we'd appreciate it. But anyway, I think we're going to wrap that bad boy up there. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, I'm excited to do more of these news shows again and uh, yeah, bring the sport close to the fans as always always don't forget it's uh any three for two at weightliftinghouse.com uh so buy two get a third item free across all of our accessories belts sleeves wraps uh you know the drill you know where to go the link is down below appreciate you tuning in and we'll see you all on the next one